Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we will start with the first part of chapter 3. In this chapter we will discuss ideas like trust, responsibility, liability, and being virtuous. So let's get going. The first idea to highlight is that the knowledge that engineers possess is unique and specific. This knowledge plays a vital role in improving society, like, let's say, having a superpower. And with great power comes uh, great responsibility. Spider-Man, anyone? Therefore, an engineer is always expected to conduct his or herself in the most ethical way possible. That includes being fair, honest, impartial, and dedicated. The video shown in the slide was discussed in the live classroom. In the video, we had a design engineer that designed a set of foundations for a construction project. During the construction, the design engineer had a feeling that the contractor had brought in the wrong type of soil for his design. Yet the design engineer said nothing about the matter. Afterwards, a collapse occurred, killing three people. The cause was the bad soil. When confronted about it, the engineer said it is not part of his job description. It is the job of the quality control engineer, which is true in practice in general. The lawyer cites the NSPE code to tell him that his duty is to help society and make sure that people are safe regardless of his job description. So he should have said something. The link for this video will be attached uh, under case one in the description below. So feel free to go ahead and watch it. But what does it mean to be responsible in engineering? Well, one definition is to hold yourself accountable at all times and in any given scenario and to behave accordingly all the time. You always need to be aware and certain of your decisions on the legal, technical and moral scales. Another question would be, what does it mean to be virtuous? It is to strongly adhere to a set of virtues at all times. That would be one definition. But one statement to sum it all is the answer to the question, what do you do when no one else is watching? Another aspect to look at is work ethics. Some people try to the best of their ability to do the bare minimum to get their salary by the end of the month, or if it's bi-weekly, bi-weekly. It is the bare minimum that is required to ensure that they keep their job and still get paid. This attitude is called getting by. Another extreme is the people who over-dedicate themselves to their job while draining their health and social life. This is done in a fading attempt to impress their superiors or get a promotion. Both extremes are unhealthy. It is important that a person finds a balance between their life and their job in a way that keeps both ends relevant and enjoyable. At your work, it is also important that you be competent. Always honing your skills and abilities to be the best fit for your job. Here are some tips to help you be more competent. 
Be imaginative. Always acknowledge your mistakes and own up to them. Try to always see the bigger picture. It will help you improve and grow. And always, always, always be objective. Never take it personal. We discussed earlier your superpower as an engineer, which manifests in the form of your knowledge and experience. It was also mentioned that with that great power comes great responsibility. Accordingly, you are obligated to always be responsible. That is the only logical conclusion. This obligation is known as obligation responsibility. At any failure or engineering can, uh, catastrophe, there is always a group of individuals that would deflect immediately to throw blame. If you are responsible for a certain work that failed for reasons beyond your control and you did the best you could in accordance with the code, then you are not to blame. So how do we identify blame? Blame is usually associated with intent. Did you intend to slack off the, on the job? Or did you intend for that bad outcome to happen? Responsibility, on the other hand, can be slacking off and acting improperly with no expectation or intent of something bad happening. This slight difference can cause a big change in outcomes in courtrooms. In engineering, mistakes happen all the time. But how do we define when an engineer is liable and when they are not? Well, an engineer is considered liable when they violate the standard of care. What is the standard of care? And how is it applied? This will be further discussed in the next video along with design codes. In the live classroom, we discuss the Hyatt Regency disaster. That is in the following video. The disaster caused the fall of a suspended walkway in the Hyatt Regency Hotel, killing more than 100 people and injuring around 200 people. Why did that happen? Simply because the engineer agreed to a design change without double-checking the impact of that change. The detailed video for this case study is attached in the description below, so go ahead and check it out. This brings us to the end of Part A of Chapter 3, where we discussed responsibility and liability. In part B, we will discuss codes and standards.